On 1 June last year, Arthur Fraser shook up South African politics when he opened a case against President Cyril Ramaphosa. That case has come to be known as the Palapala Farmgate scandal. Five days later, we heard that the Guptas had been arrested in the UAE and that they would be extradited to South Africa within short notice and that finally they would be held accountable for state capture. But now it turns out that the Guptas are free and they're chilling in Switzerland. And this came about as a result of Bloomberg News. And immediately after, the Minister of Justice was taking interviews to explain what happened. And this is some of what he had to say. We learned with shock and dismay that the extradition hearing had been concluded in the Dubai courts, in the United Arab Emirates courts on the 13th of February 2023. And our extradition request was unsuccessful. On the charge of fraud, the court found that the arrest, the arrest warrant relating to this charge was cancelled. The reasons provided for denying our requests are of a technical nature. Last year, when Julius Malema was asked about this exact thing, this matter, he said that it was a distraction, it was a diversion, and this is what he had to say. Was well, the possibility is that this story might be used as a diversion. I'm told the National Prosecuting Authority says it doesn't know this. And therefore, I'm not going to entertain a diversion and the spin of the state. The state went to write its own letter and send it to a DG in the presidency and took their own bullet and put it there. When South Africa refused to buy that story of intimidation of a DG, as a diversion, then Guptas are arrested because Guptas must be a diversion. We are not interested in that. Because the possibility is that this story might be used as a diversion. Here are my thoughts. I think that, number one, whichever way you cut it, this is a mess. It makes the Justice Department look bad and even worse when Tabo Besta is still at large. It makes a lot of the arguments around state capture and the Guptas in particular look as if they, they stand on shaky ground. Earlier this year, a court threw out the Gupta leaks as evidence and said that they were inadmissible. Now, it turns out that, you know, the warrant for the Guptas expired or lapsed or was never valid. And it turns out that they are living freely um, in the international community because there's nothing uh, actually to stop them from moving around. So this looks bad, whichever way you, you slice it. Number two, on the question of was this um, a diversion, was this a distraction? Looking at the timing of the announcement, five days after the announcement of the Palapala Farmgate scandal, I'm inclined to believe that it was indeed a distraction. Looking also at the follow through, almost one year later, I'm inclined to believe that it was a distraction. The last thing I want to say uh, in relation to this is I think that the media should have done a better job to corroborate all of the elements of the story. They ran the story on the basis of the Ministry of Justice giving them the information. They never spoke to a spokesperson from uh, the Ministry of Police in the UAE. They never spoke to a spokesperson from um, Interpol, for example. They never got legal analysts to properly dissect what was missing and what was present in all of the documentation that were provided by the state. They simply ran the version that the minister did and it made it almost seem as if the media was also trying to cover up and to protect the president. And the media doesn't need to be doing that. They just need to be giving the public full information. If you look at the quality of reporting from Al Jazeera and the quality of reporting that we've seen um, from the local media in some of these respects, I think a lot is left to be desired. Even if you think about Hazim Mustafa, who said that, you know, he brought in uh, legal money into South Africa, and it turns out that SARS didn't know about that money because it was never declared. But he said that he had all the documents and he was showing them to Sky News journalists. That requires robust journalism, lest at a later stage somebody comes and reveals that the whole thing was a sham. Anyway, what do you think about this breaking story, even though it's not breaking, it's all because this was uh, February news. It's only being told to the South African audience because Bloomberg broke the story and Bloomberg said, these guys are in Switzerland. But what do you think? Let's have a conversation.